be able to bring the meeting to order. Are there any changes or additions to the agenda as presented? Uh, we had, uh, let's see, uh, proposed change to the unification committee mini grant. Okay. And I want to bring up about uh, appointments. We ought to set that tonight so we can warn it in time. Sure. Typically, it's the next day after town meeting. Obviously, don't plan it to you very much, but I would suggest uh, Wednesday, March 2nd. And it is 6 p.m. work for everyone. Evan, would 6 p.m. on March 2nd work for you? Or 7 p.m. for the first meeting. All of the appointments. I think it would because we were going to have a uh, joint committee or subcommittee meeting that day, starting at five. But Beth said that she would be driving, so she couldn't make that meeting. I can, I, do, I it. It. I can do it at six. So I believe six would work. I'd just have to cancel our merger committee meeting. Okay, if, if that's agreeable to you guys, then we'll set that and would you let all the candidates know? Yeah, I'll let everybody know. And, and Evan, I'll double check with you on scheduling to make sure. <laughs> I appreciate it. Okay, um, are there any other items to add? If not, First of all, I'd like to uh, congratulate select board member Evan for bringing into the world a brand new little boy, Elliot. And uh, if you have the opportunity, you can at least put him on your monitor and introduce him to the town. He's over at the event. Here, you can have me. beautiful mother in law. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Mom. laughs> Elliot's a little cuter, though. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> okay, Beth, would you be ready to start? Yep. Three W promotions, website migration, five hundred dollars. Half of it is due from the village. Uh, Avenue insights and analytics, uh, reporting, reporting maintenance, and reporting support, one thousand fifty dollars. Uh, what is that for? That's our land records program. Okay, that's three months old. Thank you. Um, Barrasso Fuel, Town Garage, $533.59. Town Storage bill Building, a total of $537.65, half of which is paid by the village. Uh, Town Mill House, a total of $500, $509.18, half of which is paid by the village. Town Garage, $682.07. The library, um, $617.66. And the storage building, $631.90, half of which is paid by the village. Um, the town diesel tank, $2,626.61. Um, half of which is due. Half of which are the Okay, partial, thank you, Rosemary, is due from the village. That partial amount is $357.33. For a total amount paid to Rockville Field for multiple invoices, $6,495.99. Central equipment of CNY, uh, spray nozzle, $22.59. Syntas um, uniform, $399.02. City cards, um, post, so I'm gonna break out the credit card payment. Postage is $3.03. Programs are $416.95. Acquisitions, $200.40. Office supplies, $12.99. Record supplies, $20.77 for a total of $654.14. Um, what is the acquisitions? That's for the Historic Society. They had some of their um, building that molded over, so they had to collect the Gotcha. Okay. And programs? That's mm -hmm. library. Okay. Okay. 
Jack, of course, uh, Holcomb House Heat Propane, two hundred eight dollars and fifty four cents. Wow, you can read that. <laughs> I had it in, sketched in my mind before I put it on. Fisher Auto Parts uses the filters, eighty seven dollars and twenty three cents. Oil from also from Fisher, uh, one hundred and forty dollars and fifty six cents for a total of two hundred twenty nine dollars and seventy nine cents. Three Mountain Trailers, a light bar, $64.95. Uh, Donna taking minutes for racial justice, $166.98. Jet service envelope for envelopes, uh, $571.08. JJ Keller and Associates, uh, compliance manual. $988 and a subscription for $234.34, a total invoice total of $1,222.74. Central equipment, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, Johnson Hardware and Rental. Uniforms, $148.75. Mark Boots, $20.10. Step ladder, $114.99. Vinyl tube, $9.95. Marker battery, $17.94. Padlock, $19.51. Adapter uh, pole, $19.30. Adapter and bushing, $3.92 for a total of $356.46. Leo small engines, uh, oil tube, $16.99. Momar, um, safety equipment, $169.05. Parts and supplies, $99.35. Tools and supplies, $798.37. Safety equipment, $572.22. Um, parts and supplies, $21.99 for a total of $1,661.98. Any questions on any of those? None. North Country Federal Credit Union record overpayment $15. Uh, Kyle Noose for Skate and Bake, wood fired oven $23.29. Power Play Sports for Recreation Ski Club $999.90 and due from the village is $90 for a total of $1,089.90. Uh, Stitzel. Page and Fletcher Legal Services, $375.45. Stone Mountain Resort for Ski and Ride School, $2,210. Plow Cable Assembly, $124.35 to Stowe Road Auto Repair. Tech Group, uh, Software Licensing, Equipment Purchase Current Year, $230. Tech Support, Computer Support, $187.50 for a total of $717.50. Sorry, I'm poor at turning pages today, apparently. Uh, VLCT Employment Resource, uh, unemployment contributions totaling $292. Uh, VLCT property and casualty uh, insurance, general insurance, a total of $12,109.50. Stacey Waterman, uh, officer's salary, $750. Thank you, Beth. Do you believe any further questions, comments, concerns? No? Yeah, on the fuels and oils for the town, that's uh, that is the diesel fuel tank. It says equipment, fuels, and oils. It says uh, town diesel tank, 2,626.61. And then the village evidently took $357 out of it. it is that, uh, how does this work anyway? Because we had talked at one time about uh, a better system on that tank, you know, like having cards or whatever, whoever took fuel out of the tank would have his own card. Is that in place now? Not from the old piece out. Okay. 
We talked about that at one time. You remember that? Point? Evan brought it up, but it was one of those things where if we're going to do something like that, it's going to be a small fortune, so we'll have to plan for it and budget for it. Okay. Well, a new board ought to look into that. Everybody ought to have their own card. And that way, uh, everybody uh, that works for the town or the village, that you can track it a lot better. Uh, and so it would tighten it up an awful lot. And if I so anyway, it's something to yep. think about. Something Hopefully it doesn't get swept under the rug somewhere. It would be nice to tighten it up a little bit. Whether a card is issued to an individual or issued to a vehicle, you know, I don't know what the logistics, one better than the other. But Might make sense to issue it onto the vehicle, and that way the card can just live in that vehicle. So. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about, you know. It'd be easier to track on my end as far as like the truck from 1929. Mm -hmm. For an example, though, just so you guys know, like, like last Friday, all the tandems went through eight gallons each. Mm -hmm. We dragged it somewhat, you know, on a piece of paper to see what we go through to get for storm somewhat. How much did you say? 80 gallons each yeah. truck. Yeah. Okay. We've got all the orders in front of us to be signed. Is the board prepared to approve the meeting minutes of February 7th? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Got a motion, a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Rosemary, you've got the floor. Well, what is that as your board? Currently, we are 55% of budget for the first seven and a half months. Nothing out of the ordinary. Not yet. Um, we see we've got a couple of ones. What did you say, Arthur? They, they were received a couple of um, grant payments for projects for the highway department, which is about $35,000. Should be a mistake. We get our current use money at the end of March. We need our maintenance to be in the Revenue, we're at 94 percent, but the only thing we're lack, lacking is the uh, maintenance and grant list and the last that's payment. A major, that's a major difference. Yeah, property tax. Hopefully, we'll have a good season, so we'll be able to pay the tax. Yeah. Good. Um, we sent out about 250 absentee ballots. They're starting to come in now. Okay. We're going to have the art gallery. Um, liquor permit and two liquor licenses that have come back that are completed. The uh, art gallery is for um, Kyle News and they like a event about March 13th, 2022, between the hours of 2 and 4 p.m. And that one just needs your signature hour approval. Why don't we take that one up first? What's the board's pleasure? I move that we approve the request as we have in the past. It's in the gallery and on the out the one porch. In the gallery and the outdoor porch from 2 to 4 p.m. on March 13th. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Did you say March 13th or 15th? 13th. <laughs> Seeing none. All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. On the high received Maplefield uh, second class license or to sell beer and wine. Is there any others? And I have moved first class license, outside consumption permit, and third class license. The board want to take them both up at the same time or individually? 
on, on the MOOCs one, on the MOOCs one, their outdoor consumption area is the same as it has been in the past. So they're looking to expand. So the 20 by 30 deck area near the restaurant to include the beyond that is 30 by 200 area without barriers in use at all times. And p.m. at 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. Your preference being separate with yeah, yeah, two different know. licenses. Sure. Okay. Um, motion to approve the Maple Fields license. We have a motion to approve Maple Fields. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. And that's sending our normal letter of uh, retaining the right. Yeah. Any other discussion? None. All those in favor signify saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. What's the board's pleasure with the second applicant for the move, which is a class one? Class one and class three. Outside consumption. Outside consumption. Motion to approve. All license. Okay. And we have a motion and a second with the normal letter. Correct. Yes. Any other discussion? Kurt, is alcohol to go um, still okay? Did that end with the emergency order? I think it ended with the emergency order, as far as I know, but I, I don't know that. My understanding is that some of our motions were for that expired on a specific date. And I feel like there was an expiration date on them, in addition to the emergency order. I don't know what the expiration date was, but. I thought so, but I couldn't remember. Okay. Did we vote? The motion is second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. You got anything else, Rosemary? I do not. Do I get any uh, questions for Rosemary? Nope. Are you all good, Evan? I'm fine. Okay. Um, Jason, you got the floor. <clears throat> good evening. So this month was pretty much the same as last month. As far as stuff we've been doing, like maintenance. So we did take down. We did take down 52 ash trees. Uh, up on, we started up on the upper branch on the town line, working our way down through. Uh, and we worked with the village department to take down that wall that was falling down in the coal storage building. And yeah, we've been pretty busy with that. Stuff. And then uh, I got some greater quotes from two different companies. Mike, you can use the question. Huh? You can use the question. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, sorry. I heard secondhand from the library that they were very pleased. They felt taken care of that you reached out to them before, you know, during Flood Watch. Yeah. Offered help, and that was really good. Yeah, that storm last Friday was something else. <laughs> kind of like today with the you know, even more of the get a lot of frozen culverts and then the snow all at once. But, but the no major issues though. No, nothing in far as any cost uh, any damage really. Uh, the only thing that affected our road a little bit was uh, a team challenge. The driveway culvert failed and it caused it to scour the side of the road a little bit. We've got a temporary fix until they get their driveway called the post. Anything else? Any questions for Jason? Go ahead. What's, wrong? What's wrong with the salt truck? Uh, 
part of your report said working on it to get it to handle its load. Is it already not oh. pulling it with the extra money we put into it? No, they were just doing uh, within nozzles that were in the, this last month's uh, report there, the nozzles for the spray of the brine to get it more dialed in. To, so it's calibrated now because we done the Viking. They finally had time to get it in and calibrate everything. So it's putting out, it's what we're putting out, pound per mile of salt and uh, gallon per mile per brine now. So we can track it. Do you know how we're looking for overtime? I talked to Susie a week ago. Of course, Jacob's doing really well doing overtime. Brian's still under his allotted amount. Mark's getting close to the 200 mark. But yeah, we we're doing pretty good for the, for, you know, for the three that we had before we hired Jacob. Right. I talked to you guys about that. But yeah, we seem to be doing good now as far as with overtime and handling that. And the salt we're doing good on. I still got uh, probably about 60 to 75 ton in the salt shed and still can get 410 ton for the budget this year. Now, we had estimated the brine will have a 35-ish percentage savings on salt. And we didn't really start this year Using brine until we didn't start until December, but I think we're going to see a greater savings in the very beginning. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly until obviously the end of the year, but yeah. I, I feel that <laughs> and he committed, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. He committed 30 percent, not 35. Yeah, and then the, the sand, uh, we we're at almost 300 loads out, and it's 14 yards of load. Usually we take about 400 to bring back in and we do it. But one thing I did want to ask at one point, I know we talked about using the pit, but that is one thing where one previous foreman said that we had enough sand for two years. We never had enough sand for two years. Uh, and by getting it all from NATOs like we did, Cause us to be over budget a little bit where we used to get half from NATOs and half from our own pit. Mm -hmm. So we see some benefit. In we, we would see the benefit and savings if we did get half from our pit versus having to get all 400 loads from NATOs right. at roughly $11 a ton for 20 ton of load, roughly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody got anything else? I'm having second thoughts about this $18,000 expenditure on this dump trailer. Um, it's probably water over the dam now. Can you possibly live without that? Uh, if, I mean, if we didn't do the trailer, we could, but for moving the hydro seeder and the culvert machine and going to get the structures and culverts and stuff instead of having uh, the delivery done by Johnson Primary Garden for culverts and stuff. Only reason being the trailer has been used all these years. It's never been, it was made in house and never certified. So there's no safety rating for it. That's why we pushed for a new trailer. So if we get in an accident, either our fault or uh, you know, another person's fault, that we wouldn't be liable for having a non-certified trailer. Yes, I know. And I was kind of a proponent of that last time, but I've had time to think about it. And uh, how many times do you actually use that trailer? Uh, quite frequently. I mean, throughout the summer, when we're moving culverts, you know, when we do culverts, we're, we replace the culvert, we haul them in, you know, behind the truck. We get the structures when we're doing the total projects at the injectors, you know, the GI yeah, structures. Uh, we get bridge planking with it. Um, I just wonder how many other towns have an $18,000 bunk trailer. <clears throat> Two years ago, that same trailer would have been 48% cheaper because of COVID. Did you uh, use that trailer for frozen culvert this last week? We didn't. We didn't have the, the machine, hasn't been here. It's backward still with COVID. So we've been using an ice auger on a drill. Oh, the extension that we made up because the team Jenny's still not here. He was 
longer. So if it had it, you would have used yeah, the trailer. Yeah, you would have to try to work a tank. It would have made it a little bit faster for something like that. And for the dump trailer part, it was only $2,000 more to go with the dump trailer versus the regular trailer, a 14,000 pound trailer that was galvanized. The galvanizer is what makes it $4,000 more expensive. Mm -hmm. We did that because it would last longer. But anyway, I still have second thoughts. I doubt seriously if this the board has stomach to rescind this. Uh, but I'd like to go on record. I'm wishing I could take it back. So, so. You don't. Anything else for Jason? Um, typically, we do the executive sessions late. The last items uh, so that people don't have to stay but i'm going to put it to you part of our discussion is talking about uh, equipment sale and trade is that something you would want to stay for i got no problem to stay for okay and you have no problem staying till the end of the meeting or I'm no problem. okay perfect thank you if you need to knock out i think i got it but uh it'd be great to have you there yeah. Okay, uh, Racial Justice Committee report. The Beautification Committee. Oh, did I miss one? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. Racial yeah. Justice. Yeah. Well, we got to the. Oh, oh, oh okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Racial Justice, you're up. All right. Um, so, we recently had uh, two workshops from the Rights Commission, uh, the Racial. Um, and we had um, just under 20 participants in the inclusive bias workshop and about 50 in the bystander workshop, which when we look at trends in attendance at any kind of programming um, in the Indian world, uh, any kind of remote programming, that's actually just pretty solid. Um, so we're pretty happy with that level of participation. Um, so we're going to be uh, putting together the parent report uh, for the parents that helped cover that, um, and also getting the next couple of events uh, planned and put together that we're under that parent as well. And um, I'm excited to start putting together some stuff. Good. Thank you. Anyone else? Any questions for racial justice? No. Jeff, you don't need to stay, but you're more than welcome. Oh, okay. I'm good. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, like watching paint dry. Uh, review the planned purchases. All right. So we don't have any purchases exactly, but I wanted to make the board aware of a change in our licensing for our uh, email addresses and uh, Microsoft Office products. Um, it's going to be in order to keep the same price that we're paying right now, uh, we'll have to commit to a year in advance of our of the licenses that we do have. This will still go through the tech group. It won't change up our contract with them or our pricing with them, but it will mean that we have we can add licenses and we can transfer licenses, but we can't remove licenses anymore. So. My recommendation is that we go through and audit everybody that we have and then you know get that many licenses the largest effect that it will have on us will be uh, that it is normally when we are dealing with members who have select board members who uh, are no longer serving because we paid we had in the past paid for it month by month they'd have the rest of March before their license was expired. Now that we're going to be transferring licenses instead of being able to purchase and cancel licenses as easily, we'll, we will transfer those licenses to the new board members. So select board, our outgoing select board members will lose access to their email on March, March 2nd. But the emails themselves will be backed up. Okay. The, the emails will exist out there and we can retrieve them if we need to for any reason. Okay. But you will not be able to send and receive emails after March 2nd. Uh, 
that's going to be the biggest noticeable effect. Otherwise, like I said, we will pay for it month by month still, but our license will actually be for a year. Okay. Uh, but that will keep the pricing the same as it is right now, saving us, uh, I think it's going up 30% is the month by month increase. Wow. And that's all Microsoft, not our tech provider. They're just passing, there's a pass through. Right. So that's just a no actionable item or just an FYI? Yeah, we're not actually going out and making a purchase exactly. Right. Uh, we're just, the nature of our licensing arrangement is shifting a little. Charlie? So, just so I understand, yeah. everyone that has an FTO Town Johnson email address, you pay for that each one? Yes. How much? Uh, five bucks. Five bucks? Yep. Is that? So members of the planning commission have those, but I've never seen anything charged to the planning commission budget for what that cost. Mm -hmm. It comes out for us, it because we pay for that as part of our tech, our contract with the tech group, okay. it is easier for us to you aggregate it somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, getting it down to that level, we keep track of village versus town. But getting it down to individual members uh, or individual committees. Or individual committees it isn't something we've practiced before. So Brian, right now we pay license by license. Is there an option to move to a different plan where it's a group license where we get up to 50 licenses and then we can add and add and subtract? I can ask it what the threshold is for moving to a group license. And, yeah, it'd be interesting to also know what the cost difference is. Yeah. How many do we currently have between the town and village? close to 50 yeah. of the basic licenses. Uh, of the more expensive uh, user licenses, we only have two. Uh, so that might be something that they want, uh, they would, might want us to get signed up for it if they were going to offer us a group package. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll have to check with the tech group. Okay. And that, that was it for planning purchases? That's it. Okay. And then I'm getting into your report now, beautification committee. Yes. So, beautification committee would like to start uh, operating a beautification uh, Facebook page. If you recall our social media policy, we have. Uh, registered official uh, outlets that we use and operate. So if we're going to create one for for this that will be an official outlet, we would want to modify the social media policy to add it. So that's my suggestion that we modify the social media policy to add the official, this would be packet page six, uh, government speech forums. To add the official Johnson Beautification Committee uh, excuse me, we go under state seven limited public forums, those are the social media platforms, we go with the official Johnson uh, Beautification Committee uh, Facebook page. Whose name is this going to be under? Set it up. Uh, I don't discuss that with the beautification committee. Um, we didn't get into the weeds of the of the management. I wasn't sure actually if that's something that the town sets up and then I'm added as an administrator. If I do it through my personal, I, I'm not sure how that. I'm not stopped. sure if things have changed, but when we set up the town Facebook page, yeah. that's currently out there. It couldn't be a standalone, it had to be to a person, and so right. it's actually attached to me, right. um, but it's just a different page. Okay. And I'm thinking probably all of the Facebook pages are like that, they're attached to somebody. Yeah, well you can transfer ownership of it, but yeah, it, it has to start with someone. Right. 
<clears throat> and that could start with myself or 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 Kyle or, or any other presentation of any member. It should start with the Town of Johnson administrator email address as the profile and just have the username be Town of Johnson administrator and that's the that's the person. It's okay. not your name, it's your um, email address and town email address name. That would be a good way to do it, set it up the town of Johnson administrator. It wouldn't be a personal Facebook page. And then any attached rec committee, the, the town Facebook page, the beautification, they, yeah. they could all be part of that. And we should transfer these others to be associated with that profile. Yeah. Yeah, so. That's a good idea. Uh, the library is the only one that I'm not associated with. That. I don't mean associated, I mean, I mean, you should own it. Yeah. Like, you need to actually transfer ownership. And concerted effort to transfer ownership. Okay. okay. I believe conservation commission has a Facebook. I don't know who else, but this seems like a partial list. Um, maybe we want to pull our groups and make sure that we've got an accurate list. This is what was what yeah. I had last time, but yeah, yeah, I'll probably ask something. Um, but anyways, this is before us tonight is the application to make. So I'll, I'll move that we add uh, uh, the application committee, Tom Johnson Duplication Committee, Facebook page to our social media policy, and we're page seven, we're limited to public forums. So we have a motion to add the Duplication Committee Facebook to the social media policy. We have a second. Second. Motion and second. Any other discussion? See none. All those in favor, see try to say no. Aye. All right. So opposed. If there's no objections from the board, uh, why don't we slip right into the beautification grant application right here? Just yeah. kind of like a comment about social media generally. I think that we need to do better. I think we need to do better in a couple different ways. I think we need to do better about who we're reaching out to. If our audience if we're looking for 40 to 70 year olds, I think Facebook is a great platform for that. <laughs> if you're looking for younger audiences, we need to get, we, these, some of these social media accounts we're talking about, we need to get in Snapchat. If you're looking for millennials, go Twitter and Snapchat and Instagram. If you want young kids, go Instagram. Like if we actually want to reach our full demographic, we need to use more than just what we are comfortable using. Um, so it's I agree. <laughs> it's just I'm not there. <laughs> I, I, I can see a couple of people looking alarmed that the prospect of managing all that. There are actually platforms that you can set up where if you post in one thing, it'll duplicate your posts in other things. Uh, it's and it benefits this than that. Um, and so that might be something to look at too. So we will send a snap and a tweet and an ID post and a Facebook post, but you only have to do the work once. It might be nice also to partner with uh, the college. I'm sure there's students, students or two, would really like to either an internship or just as experience to do that person for you. Great idea. I find it helpful to go to fifth graders too. <laughs> <laughs> or younger. Or Sometimes younger. two year olds can handle that for you. Uh, so, is there any particular reason that you excluded those that was over 70? There's no reason. I'm just making my point that <laughs> there's a whole marketing and PR thing behind all of this. And the decisions we make matter when we're talking about equity. We're talking about being equitable and we want to share information widely. We need to think outside of what we're comfortable with. That's my point. Agreed. <laughs> you may need to help us on how we do it. But yeah. Sure. That was Marcus. Okay. Idea. Carl, I think, you know, the beautification grant. Yeah. Uh, I was just going to, sorry, I was just going to make one comment about this specific thing. Um, I, I agree that. Um, Oh, that this could be 
something that should, like according to us and others, go through for, for the, um, uh, the economic development, um, you know, that I, I think of it also as economic development too. So, um, the word out and president push the two platforms. So that could be, mm -hmm. we have some of those cluster allocated in the future. So, good thought for the next board. <laughs> Okay, now the beautification grant. Yeah, so uh, at our last meeting, beautification mini grants came up and all of the beautification committee made all of the requested changes. Uh, and they had some additional changes they had suggested we consider, which would be excluding the, uh, you know, we said the beautification committee members are ineligible for grant applications. Uh, it might be appropriate if we extended that ineligibility to more than just the beautification committee. In particular, the select board uh, and possibly town employees or other boards. I think that it definitely makes sense for the select board as the body that oversees the beautification committee. There could be a perception of undue influence there. Um, and it makes sense also for uh, municipal employees, but Select board gives a pretty strong endorsement. Anything else is a little well, I think on the fence. The way we left it, it was just beautification committee members were being unable to apply. Yes. What, what's the board's thought there? I agree. We could probably formalize that in the motion. How far do you want to extend that? Well, I, we, had a, we had a motion last time. Probably we had a motion authorizing the, the ability to put out grants, which included the uh, exclusion of committee members. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll make a motion to um, also exclude select board members and their families from um, being eligible for the beautification grant that we previously approved. Would your motion extend to employees or just as select board members? And the select board members. Okay. You have a motion extending that exclusion to select board members. Or second. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Yeah, I would presume that our conflict of interest policy would cover that. Uh, anyway, but I have no problem about making it explicit. Okay. Any thoughts, Evan? Um, I mean, we, we kind of allowed them to exclude people based on geographic location, so I'm already excluded. <laughs> I guess it's fine. Okay. Hearing no other comments, all those in favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed? You guys have it? Thank you. I'm right, that was the only change. Uh, racial Justice Committee name change. All right, the Racial Justice Committee has suggested a name change to uh, the Racial Justice and Social Equity Committee. Okay. I feel that, that better captures the work that they do and their mission. Social Equity, is that? The yeah, Racial Justice and Social Equity Committee. So moved. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. A motion, second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Updated draft of class four road policy. All right. So, uh, okay. So, the class four road policy has made changes that we discussed at our meeting and updated the format of it a little bit to uh, make it a little more in line with kind of the style and kind of set for our, our policies in order to um, I believe that 
this captures everything that we have discussed. Um, and uh, the only thing I know that we would still like to do is update Appendix A, the background data with more recent, uh, more recent data. Uh, the other recommendation I would have is um, section 10 is on packet page 17, uh, the penalties. We discussed this a little bit, but I don't believe that we actually got authorization for sending it to legal review. Uh, but I would like, if we're going to include the penalties, I would like to send it for legal review. Department did request that. Uh, I have asked BLCT for an estimate on this, but I wasn't sure. Okay. Uh, I didn't send it to our attorney or or get anything else. I just asked BLCT if they give us give me an estimate on how much they think it would cost. Uh, if we want to wait for the for BLCT's estimate to come back. Yeah. I mean, that's a service we have to pay for. Is just to look at that penalty section. Uh, for any review, and, and they wouldn't take a, a part of it, they would want to review the right. whole thing. Okay. And what's the board's thoughts on that? Or on the whole policy? We are closing in on it, but we're also such a lame duck. This is our the last meeting of this board. Well, that's our lamer than others. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I think we could benefit the next board by continuing forward with the question on the penalties. Yes. That will have to be answered. I think we should not stop because of something else that's going to happen in the future. I think that if we're going to make a decision, this board's already reviewed it, reviewed it, and if we wait for a new board, we're just going to continue to review it. So let's not let's act, not wait. Well, I think they're still going to have to review it because they we are don't, probably yeah. we don't have the answer on that penalty section. I understand your point, but I also think that if people have feedback, we should get it. What are you suggesting? Do you have any feedback? Do you have an opinion? Do I have an opinion? Yes, on how we proceed or no. And do you have any feedback on this penalty area? Or I do don't. you think it looks good? I mean, we've been combing through this for a while, so I feel like there you go. given the input that I have. So we could approve it uh, with the exception of number 10, you know. Uh, Excluding the penalty portion, right? So a further date for that iron the other. We could approve the whole thing contingent on attorney review. Yeah, approval. that's true. I'd like to hear from the people who put it together tonight a little bit more. Probably. So there's um, right I know that the, I believe it's the third paragraph. So it says the statute required towns to provide maintenance to bridges and public and household projects. That is not true. In fact, there's a quotation included later on that says that that's not true. Uh, business towns policy to maintain bridges and culverts on class road, but it's not required by the statute. Uh, other definitions for class four highways. The bottom of the page, the last sentence, uh, receiving state aid and are passable should be changed to may be passable or generally passable, but the statute doesn't require that it be passable 24 7. But where was that, Charles? It's at the bottom of the definitions, the, last, the very last sentence. Um, I get this page 15. Number. I don't have a no, I don't have your packet. 
So page under page, page, page 13. Okay, page 13. They don't have, they're not necessarily passive in the world. They may be, they generally are, but not all. And again, on town policy, again, other than bridges and culverts, and we have to maintain them, we don't have to maintain them. So this policy was presented to the select board from the planning commission, and you're now saying what you presented is not accurate? That may be the case. Okay. That may be the case. Uh, and I did some more research after Diana Osborne pointed it out. And she's right, and if we did anything other than that, we'd go wrong. Okay. And then finally on the penalties, which you're not too excited about, but um, item C in penalties, the notification should state clearly, should be changed, I believe, to must or shall, not permissive, it's required to be clear. Can you, you where, where's, I don't know what it's called. 10C. 10C. 10C, notification. Shall stay clear. And then I got some words to change, but that's how we do it. Um, uh, I is if the select board takes such action at the time and expense, the persons responsible will be, will be charged two times the cost. You think that should be changed to? You know, Will be liable for two times the cost. That makes it more civil rather than criminal. If someone's liable for it, and we have to enforce that. But that's just me playing general rules. You happy with those changes, Paul? Are you happy with those changes Charlie was talking about? Yes. How about you, Diane? I think that the town policy and the state statute are will be um, separated if you do what he says, which is right. You don't want to say that the state statutes require something that they don't. You may choose to require to go along with the tradition of the town maintaining bridges and culverts, but if you choose to do that, my input would be make that the minimum rather than the maximum. Because the problem that's evolved over the last 20 years is the select board has set the maintain bridges and culverts as the maximum that they will do. And that's just plain wrong because of this misinterpretation of state statute. You guys were led to believe that that was the most you could do was bridges and culverts. And that the state was telling you you had to do that and and that's just not true and so i think that it's important to take out the phrase and that the state statute requires that and if you choose as a board to make that the town policy have that be the minimum that you maintain rather than the maximum because the problem here is that works that's not being done on the road and it, it needs to be but the whole committee is happy with everything else the rest of the document, with the exception of these tightening up some of the wording. I, I wasn't on the committee. I'm sorry. No, but you had a lot of input in this thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, and everybody appreciates it. Thank you. There's only one other, sorry, one other point I would make on that. Sorry, one other would make, but the, uh, the annual inspection part, which is. Uh, what's that? Oh, uh, four, section four, paragraph two. Yeah. Uh, policy of the town has public works su supervisor survey class four highways and trails. We discussed it previously. We weren't discussing trails. Yeah. What was that? The highway inspector inspected roads to decide what needed to be done. Hmm. Well, I would strike the entrails. 
Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I think we ought to get this ironed out tonight. I think it's possible. They're bringing up a lot of changes that uh, we could add in. I agree, but I think I've been messing with this for six years since I first got on the board. You know, well, I find it a little disconcerting that uh, you know, the Planning Commission did some good work, but we're here at the 11th hour and now you're telling us that some of the work you did was incorrect. Well, I think you know, yeah, I that, that you're right. It shouldn't have been. The, uh, the one case that Doug Holden granted to us that uh, in retrospect did show that the courts uh, interpreted the same statute that it's not a requirement to maintain bridge performance, which we are all in the direction of us. We missed that. But it was also discussed last, last, the last year in the Chairman's draft. And what I am brought up the last year in the last slide for you. And also, I do have to disagree with Diane that we're not establishing a minimum or a maximum. The select board needs to fund. My my opinion is the select board needs to fund as a line item in the of class one road, but this does not address that. Okay. Right. That's my own personal opinion. Yeah. yeah. I, I agree that you need to spend money on class one road, but it's a separate issue. It has nothing to do with the quality. Did you hear something there? Yeah, I just we were going through kind of how we got here. I think that the important point is in who screwed up where or when it was brought up and when it was changed. Here we are now. And we have this document and now there's some pretty substantial changes, I think. And that's I mean, substantial may not be the right word, but uh, significant changes that we can't just push on because it's been dragging on a long time. We need to actually send it to legal review and make sure that um, these these changes as requested tonight are uh, uh, you know past legal ones. I agree. I think we I think I mean we you took notes of the changes that we're doing. I've got all the suggested changes. All right and good. That wasn't hurt, but I, I think I captured everything that was mentioned. So, is it the pleasure of the board to uh, send this to legal to review? Is it I think it's well, you, you think that it, our understanding is that we're going out for it, then I'm good with that. I had asked the LCT, and I didn't recall if I was. I had full authority on that yet, or if it was just a plan on court to ask. Have you provided them anything yet? Or? I did, but if I send them an updated okay. draft, but I haven't heard anything back from them, so I think that they just haven't gotten to it yet. And with you know, respect to everyone assembled, the, the, the idea that the state doesn't require this, which is new information for us, I know it came up two weeks ago. It's, it's new information as of Two weeks ago, when I had brought it up, but we really need to do our due diligence to make sure that's true because we were, you know, just to, to make sure because we were operating under what somebody else told us before without going back to the statute and verifying. We need to do that. Look, I I personally think that the legal questions that we would want to have answered is the whole penalties in a policy question and exactly what the state statute is for the class four highways now. It's over a year. And I read it, I can agree with this verbatim out of the out of statute. It's um, maintenance by the town, of course, requirement of the statute, 19 days at three time, class four highway, et cetera, et cetera. It's exactly what the statute says. Um, I think the thing that uh, I just want to make sure of is that it sounds like the consen there's consensus on the suggestions discussed tonight, and um, that's what we have lawyers for, to verify the interpretation of the law. So I don't think any of us should continue to try to interpret the law at this point. Uh, 
And also, um, I just want to make sure that no changes that we haven't discussed end up going in before we go into the room. So yep. if you hear from other people afterward, I feel like that's too late. So my intention is to not bring this back to you until we've completed legal review, unless it's a high enough threshold that we need to review the, it comes up during a procurement policy if it's a high enough threshold. Uh, otherwise, if it's something that can be, if it's low enough that it can be approved at my level, I'm just going to do that. It seems like the additional time might give you an opportunity to update Appendix A too. Yes. And that seems like it's super important to yeah. have accurate data. And you might even choose to um, establish some other data parameters that the road foreman would use in inspecting the roads and include some of that data in the Appendix A or make a new Appendix for B because that's an important part of this policy is the fact that somebody's going to be looking at the road. And I know if I were that person, I'd like some guidance on what I was supposed to be looking at. We can discuss that and, and yeah, that, I'm pretty comfortable with it making changes to Appendix A yeah. without legal review because I don't, it's just supporting information yeah. and we might do something similar. Like you said, for some other ones. Um, having some like guidance as part of the policy about what are we looking for and what are we expecting is a good practice. So that's a really good suggestion. You have any thoughts, Stacey? No, I like the idea of putting that in there. This way everybody knows exactly what we're looking for and what the standard is so we can go by it. Okay. Good. Okay. Anything further on class four highway? I'd like to thank everybody who's been involved in this. This has been a long journey. And I'm very sorry that I'm not going to be able to see it through. But I'm sure shortly it will come to an end. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, the ATV ordinance and the trial on right. into the building. So, last week, last time we met, uh, we had some discussion about uh, what we we're going to do for the uh, for the ATV ordinance and we're going to handle that going into the near term future. Um, we have, we have declined to take any action at the time because it was not warned as an action item. Uh, so we thought that members of the public might, who might want to have input, might not have publicly had a good opportunity to. So we're bringing that up again before we decide on what, if any, action we're taking. We won't start. We don't have to make an ordinance change. We could make a policy. Uh, we currently don't have a policy on ATV. <laughs> but we could make a, make a motion and call a policy. Well, we have no language in front of us to make a motion on. I mean, essentially, all they need added to our ordinance is Railroad Street, correct? Main Street. No, that's a state road. That's not ours. Okay. Last so, time, last meeting, uh, somebody from the ATV club said that they were looking for, I mean, the real change to the ordinance would need to be for Railroad Street, because they can already get down to Main Street, and they already have area on the other side of town they need to use railroad street to get to whatever those roads are but the trial was for main street yeah. and railroad street i mean but the state put up signs for them permanently yeah on route 15. and part of gould hill uh, part of gould hill also because the, the ordinance is very old and it currently states any unpaved class three town highway 
and any class four town highways. Um, and where we're looking at some class two and some class three paid, that's not really addressed in our current ordinance. I mean, this ordinance really needs to be cleaned up quite a bit anyhow, but, but that's where it could be addressed to go down Railroad Street or uh, Gould Hill, whatever that. Right, so in looking over, I wanted to really take a bit closer look at what is required to change an ordinance. Um, I think we really need to be clear on that. And when I was looking into it, it became, well, what I think, what I found was there's no uh, provision in the law for us to make a, a, a waiver to an ordinance. Um, this is something that we've been doing, um, but we have been, this very strict set of, uh, this strict policy under the ordinance, under the state law that we have to follow to, to uh, adopt or amend an ordinance. That includes this whole procedure for the public to be able to override whatever the select board decides. So if we just make a waiver to an ordinance and continue making that waiver every single year, we're essentially denying the public the right to override us. So I think that there really, this idea that we can issue a waiver, and we did last year, I think it was actually, <laughs> I'm glad I didn't know this last year because I think it's it's fine. We, we issued a waiver and we, we tried something. It, it, I, I haven't heard any um, anybody say that it was a big failure, but um, we can't just continue on issuing wa uh, waivers. I also went back to see like, where are these waivers? Like what was the last time we actually issued a waiver and, and what exactly was it? And it, I couldn't find it. Um, I could have spent some hours trying to go back through all the meeting minutes, but I do enough of that and I didn't want to. So um, just the idea that the, it's not clear when we issue a waiver like that, A, that it's even legal, but B, we're not even keeping track of them. what that waiver says, what those roads are that we've issued waivers for. And I think that that includes some on Gould Hill and up on Clay Hill, um, if I'm mistaken. Is that right? So um, I think it's far more than just Railroad Street that if, if you want to allow access into the village. Um, so that's, I think the board going forward is either going to need to change the ordinance not change the ordinance, but continuing to kind of issue waivers is not uh, not on the table, I wouldn't think. I think the way we have been operating is similar to the way we do with the snowmobiles. When they come and make a request for certain road access, we would typically grant it or put uh, conditions on it. And that was similar to the request for the ATVs when they made a request open up certain highways, getting access to the village, we're operating in a similar fashion as we do with snowmobiles. Um, and that's the way we've been sort of operating, even though we have an ordinance for ATVs. And when, when we first drafted an ordinance for ATVs, it was because we wanted to uh, uh, encourage certain behavior and not other behavior with ATVs. They were new on the scene. It was back in the early 2000s or something of that time frame. And we have a lot of requirements in here to be part of VASTA and things like that. But we don't have anything like that for the Snowmobile Club. And I'm, I'm beginning to wonder if an option the board would have is to repeal the whole ordinance and we can approve case by case my ways the same way we do with some of them. Instead of trying to get into controlling behavior of belonging to their, their uh, statewide organization. So that's explicitly what the voters said they didn't want to do. 
But if, nice. if I'm not saying you're wrong, I'm just saying I don't want to sit next to you. <laughs> <laughs> you're full of it. It's the last night. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. <laughs> we are treating them different than another recreational vehicle that someone did. That, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, I hear you. I'll recognize the public in a few minutes. I want to let board members speak to it. If there's no further board members that want to speak, but I think, this. unless I'm mistaken, this ordinance that's on the website from 2006, this is the ordinance that we're operating under right now. Yes, right. it is. Yeah. And yeah, I don't have the second one. No, I, have second page. Okay. I just want to make sure we're all in the same ordinance. Okay. That's all. Oh, well, could we keep the ordinance? And if there was a request from the ATV club on a case by case basis? For Gould Hill and Railroad Street, we could approve that. Well, depends on what you mean by a case by case basis. I mean, you can amend. Well, it. road by road. Um, I I just feel like these. <laughs> we we treated a lot of other things with time sensitivity. Uh, every board member here on certain topics, and this has been overwhelmingly supported by the voters for years. And I feel like uh, you know. You're, you're coming to us with information that which is good information, but it's just stalling the process when they need to do their due diligence to get roads on maps or whatever they do by summertime. We're just kicking it down the road. Yeah, and I, I guess it's it's funny to hear that now because when I brought this up that last May 17th and wanted to have these discussions to move this discussion forward, then the board said, and in particular, you said you didn't want to discuss it that you didn't want to have that discussion last May when we had ample time to, to have these discussions, but now a year later, we're in a, in a rush to do it because everybody's got to, you know, so it's it's funny to kind of be put off a year ago, but now I'm being told to rush. <laughs> I don't know who, who said we didn't want to talk about it. I've got the meeting minutes here from May uh, 17th, 2021. Mike said there's 538 people who don't want to talk about it. He doesn't want to leave. He wants to leave things the way they are. He doesn't even think we should talk about it. Uh, Evan, you have a similar quote in here. Um, so I, I, I don't want to. The similar quote say. Uh, I think go back to the to the meeting minutes. But when I uh, have a. When I brought up the, the idea of talking about this last last May, uh, you were not in favor. Seems, seems like you're not quoting me, uh, but okay. Yeah, and I think, at least in my own thoughts, where back in May, we hadn't had the, uh, the trial period going into the village yet. So that's one reason that I would not have uh, supported. Didn't even have the state term. Yeah, we weren't even yeah. on the, in the village yet. So right. I wanted to wait until that was completed before see how that went before we even went into this because it is a major thing to go into this ordinance and change it. I I am certain that no matter how we change it, it'll be a petition raised and we'll go to the special town meeting. So, so are you, are you saying it was more as discussion and action, but we're not really allowed to take action? Uh, what do you mean? I mean, it's an actionable item. There's, if there's a pertinent motion made, we could take action tonight. I would motion to, well. All we can do at this point, because it's been delayed, is make a motion to approve the ATV club. This seem uses of rights of way that the town owns as they had last year. If that's just Gould Hill and Railroad Street, I can make that motion. I just, maybe I'm missing one. You would need to craft a motion to change the ordinance. 
to include certain highways or, or excluding certain highways, but. Uh, so, well, Eric, right now, <clears throat> right now the ordinance says, right now the ordinance says all trans vehicles may be operated on the following town highway, yeah, well, any unpaved class three town highway mm -hmm. and class uh, four town highways as identified on the official town highway map. The select board may list uh, specific unpaid, unpaved class three and class four roads where ATVs may be operated or not operated by an annual posting and public notice, public notice of roads open to ATV use for this ordinance. So essentially this is already saying for unpaved class three, the town can specify on an annual basis via posting. I think Evan, what you're talking about is you're talking about you want to list paved class three town highways where the select board can choose on an annual basis to post what roads are allowable for use. Is railroad street class three or class two? Class two. Class two. Yeah. So, you know, we'd have to add paved class three and class two highways approved on an annual basis or something in that. But, you know, or, and we should add unpaved class two as well, I, I believe. Yeah, paved or unpaved class two. Yeah. Do we have unpaved class two? Is yeah, Plot Road. Yeah, Footbrook Road. Uh, Footbrook, I believe, is class three. Plot Road class two. But Plot Road. Class two. I think it's listed as class two on the state's website, but it doesn't matter. So what would the motion be? Well, you could craft a motion that would include wording of something along the lines of uh, class three paid and class two paid and unpaid would also be eligible for the annual uh, review of the select board. Some motion. So I'd be motioning to um, add to the ordinance or amend the ordinance? It would be an amendment to the ordinance. So I motion that we amend the ordinance to include class three paved roads and class two paved and unpaved roads in the list of roads that will be, I don't have the ordinance right in front of me. I gotta get the exact wording. It's on the town website. On the town website. Under documents and then ordinances policies. So, if I can offer an alternative or suggestion for this, I'd really like to get a crack at updating more than just this piece on, on this ordinance. Uh, if we're going to update the ordinance and at all, I'd, I'd like to do it that way. Uh, I just <coughs> would like kind of the, the blessing of the select board to spend some of my time working on this ordinance. Okay. Um, I recognize what you say, but we do have a motion on the floor right now. Yep. And I would ask if there is a second on that motion. Well, we don't have a motion yet. He hasn't drafted his words he's going to use. I'm just looking for the section oh, that it would be okay. under. You know, okay. Are you? It would be under section C, I believe. So, section 4C specifically. Okay. And I'm not taking that as a formal motion yet until you craft your language. I motion that we amend the ordinance under section 4C to include paved class 3 roads and paved and unpaved class 2 roads. Okay. I'll accept that as a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. Okay, now we'll go back open for discussion. And 
to Brian's point, he would like, do you have something specific that you'd want to address in the ordinance if you were to look at the whole language? Not, I'd have a hard time summarizing it as any specific, one specific item. You mentioned some of it about, you know, is it right that we are uh, requiring people to be members of VASA in order to operate? You have the second page. Um, of what? We this don't have the second page for some reason. I can read it. I'm going to read it. I'll just read it. Ready, Eric? Okay. So, You're going to read the whole thing? I'm going to read the whole second page. Okay. So I'm going to start with a D on the first page. Okay. All terrain vehicles show. Sorry, I say that and then I jump my screen. All terrain vehicles shall not be operated on public bike paths, hiking trails, vast snowmobile trails, or private lands without landowner permission. Town owned recreation fields, public greens, or any burial ground or uh, school playground, or in the parking lot of church, hospital, town or village owned buildings, or nursing homes in town. All speed limit traffic control devices and rules of the road apply to the operation of ATVs on town highways, open breeze. Maximum speed limit shall be 25 miles per hour. Riders to maintain single file on right side of road. ATVs may not be operated within the town between the hours of 9 p.m. and 8 a.m. Monday through Friday or between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. on Saturday and Sundays. Section 5 penalties. First offense $100, waiver fee $50. Second offense $200, waiver fee $100. Third, in each subsequent event, offense, $500 with a waiver fee of $250. Section 6, Enforcement. This is a civil ordinance and shall be reinforced by any duly elected or appointed police officer or enforcement official appointed by the select board with enforcement powers within Johnson through the Judicial Bureau. Section 7, Severability. If any section of this ordinance is held by the court of competent jurisdiction to be invalid, such findings shall not invalidate any other part of the ordinance. Section 8, effective date. This ordinance shall be effective 60 days after the adoption, blah, blah, blah. And then signatures, and it was in June of 2006. And then there's an adoption history at the bottom, which I don't know that we care about. Okay, what, can you identify some things, Brian, that you would want to? I want to double check its handling of class four roads. The rules on class four roads have changed uh, rather recently on how ATVs are allowed on class four roads. So I want to make sure that the new state statute is compatible with our ordinance. Uh, I think it is, but I, I'd like to have the opportunity to look. The, the current language does say uh, the select board may list specific unpaid class three and class four roads where ATVs may be operated or not operated. Yeah. So it looks like we did reserve the right to restrict ATVs on some class four roads if we yeah. so chose. I'm going to keep it because I'm going to read it. Right there. Yeah. Is there anything? That's that's a section you'd want to look at. I'd like to look at that one, and uh, like I said, the uh, being registered with VASA are the two areas in particular that I'd like more time for. I believe that I can have something prepared for our first March meeting if the board is interested. I mean, I'm not even sure. Do we have the authority to require registration, proof of insurance, certificates, uh, joining the VASA, or displaying a plate? I mean, that's probably state requirements. Yeah, I don't know that we have that authority either. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Oh. We do have a motion on the floor, a second, if the board wants, I'll open it up to the public. I'd like to reserve a little time to read the whole paragraph on this minutes, to Mr. Chairman. Okay. I, I believe that uh, there was some things that were slightly omitted, so it's kind of out of context. If there's no further, unless you've got something to add, I'm going to open up the public. 
Yeah, I just I, at our October 18th meeting, I stated my position that I thought that anyone who wanted to change the ordinance should submit a petition at town meeting day for a vote. Um, and that, that's how I felt that I expressed at that time and said at that time that I think that's the proper way for us to transparently go about this and to do that fairly. And uh, so that's why how I feel that this should be. Did you realize that would be non voting mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I would support that too. And Brian, if we do get on the road of making changes, I think that there's a few different things like the definitions here. While I don't disagree with the definition, um, there are definitions in statute. And I feel like that it's more appropriate for our ordinance to point to statute to define what things are. There's honestly there's a model policy that I would use for a lot of this that is, is much more recent than ours. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that I would mostly base my work off of the updated I, model policy. I say that because I just looked up statute really quickly and it's very specific about defining what an all terrain vehicle is, uh, including weights and measurements and all kinds of stuff. So I feel like that's appropriate and we're talking mm -hmm. here. For an ordinance to reference a state statute. Yeah. Rather than spell out the definition. Yeah. Okay. Any further comments? If not, I'll open it up to the public. Anybody has any comments relating the ordinance? Yes, go ahead. This might work. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just recording it for everybody. Oh, okay. Because with a mask. Anyway, my name is Dora Gantini. I live on Cotting Hollow Road. And um, I came to talk about ATVs because they've become very much part of my life. Um, uh, the farm is right on the road. And um, um, in 2020, the number of ATVs on our road exploded. Weekends have become unbearable. Between 70 or 80 ATVs go by the farm um, on a weekend day. And they, when they go by at speed, which they do, and um, they're extremely loud. And I'm because of the pain of, you know, my garden is right there, my house is right there, my ears actually hurt. And I looked it up. The decibels that are produced by ATVs traveling at 25, 30 miles an hour and at the close proximity where I am most of the time does cause damage to your hearing. So I have to wear ear protectors all weekend. And I notice many of the ATV riders do as well. Um, and also my farm has lost value. There is nobody with normal hearing that would consider buying that farm right now. Um, I asked the select board and the trial, which appears to be illegal, what you put in place a year ago. Um, and to further limit ATV use to residents of Johnson, because I believe the residents of Johnson would have care and, and concern for their neighbors, whereas most of the ATVs that go by our house are from out of state. Thank you. Thank or you. out of town. Um, my personal opinion is that ATVs don't belong on any road. Just period. ATVs do not belong on roads. I think it's irresponsible for ATV users, riders, to depend on public roads to support their recreation. The snowmobilers have a history of creating an own independent trail system. And I think that it's inappropriate for ATV users to adopt the public roads as their their recreational source. It devalues property. They keep, keep talking about how it's going to bring business to town because they go by gas. It's not going to nearly account for the loss in the property values and when people who are paying property taxes and thousands of dollars, and you can't buy enough homes to make up for that loss. My name is Jan Gerhardt and I live at the end of Clay Hill Road. Um, my house is actually a mile from 
Old Bend Over Hill Road through the woods. Um, it is up, but the sound of ATVs on the weekends is unbelievable. Even at my house, and I'm not even close to the road. Yeah, it's an interesting concept of having an open just for Johnson riders. So I do believe that there will be a level of I think respect and sort of just neighborly usage. Um, but I'm also going to be thinking about what you said, so I'm not for sure. My question is more about process. So when we started, I'm sorry if I appear really confused on this, but Nat, you opened up the meeting with, you know, talking about sort of like, I don't think you use the trial period, but basically sort of a waiver to the current ordinance and that we really can't give a waiver. But basically we're just had kind of, you meant the decision consciously or or not of like just not enforcing the ordinance for the trial period, basically. Like to not enforce it. So it's just like we're just gonna kind of like see how it see how things go for this trial period. And that I think you were cautioning about let, let's not make like a big decision here at this meeting tonight. And I think that's how it's in the um how it, how it's warned for this evening. To review options, not to you know, create a bill that does review options for ATP ordinance and trial. Okay, so mm -hmm. reviewing options. But then what I'm hearing is I'm, I'm now like, you know, I think like we need to be pumping the brakes on this right now because, you know, Brian's looking at, you know, getting permission to craft this ordinance, which if I'm understanding that correctly, it's, it, it does include like Route 15 and the railroad street. Is that correct? Is that your, your motion? Well, his motion didn't specifically state highways. It just classes of highways. Classes and of highways. The board would have to decide the annual okay, right. Road. But I guess we're, I, we went for like from zero to 60 in my, my thinking. And I was thinking about, I wasn't at the last meeting in person, but just um, dipping in on it in terms of like the trial period. And so there's a pretty vibrant conversation around that about and there was some question about whether it was really like authentic and true. Like, what are, were we really seeing? Like, what the impact would be by opening up these these roads? And I think what I was I, my understanding is like not truly that perhaps in COVID, perhaps there was like an understanding of some riders who were just kind of like kind of like chill. You know, let's get through this period and then let's get back to like riding. And I'm not sure if that's and that's just sort of what my kind of what, what I had gleaned from that. So I sort of given that, you know, if there's just a little bit of truth to that, right? And sort of not like how you open the meeting, and just getting concerned that we're entertaining a motion about an ordinance when I was coming to the meeting saying that we're gonna have like a 30 minute just to review. Let's let's review the options. What are the options? And I, I guess that's my question. What are the options? So, my neighbors and I don't call them ATVs, we call them four wheelers, as opposed to two wheelers, which are motorcycles, which can go anywhere and make as much or more noise because they don't have the speed limit, they, they, they don't have the lower speed limit of 25 motorcycles on the bottom of 25 miles an hour, whether they observe it, that's another issue. So, Motorcycles are, I believe, as noisy, or maybe a little bit more noisy, than ATVs, four wheelers. Four wheelers pay by gas, they run on gasoline, they pay road taxes. I believe that to be on the road, they have to have registration and, and insurance like any motor vehicle. So I hear their, their concerns, <laughs> I share some of them. But how can we allow motorcycles? But not allow four wheelers. How can we allow two wheelers, but not four wheelers? I don't understand that. Charlie, Jeff, I was going to say we were talking about how we treat um, these vehicles differently than we treat other recreational vehicles, and that's because they are they are basically cars. But um, cars are a lot more regulated in terms of you know, motor vehicles, car trucks. What we all kind of around here tonight are more regulated in terms of noise and other systems things like that. Um, there, it just is a different animal. And if it's if it's a type of 
vehicle, I know if the way that it's used, if it's creating serious quality of life issues for people that live in town, then yeah, it, it does need to be treated like a different kind of vehicle. Okay. Uh, if you're addressing the ordinance in the future, I think it's important to um, be aware that the sheriff has said that he has no interest in enforcing the um, fines and policies that you put in place with the ordinance. And if the sheriff's not going to enforce them, I would be really curious why you even bother to include that in there. Because I don't think we have any municipal law enforcement person who could enforce it if the sheriff is choosing not to. So you might just want to leave that enforcement part out altogether unless you also say who's going to be doing the enforcing. Chris, okay. is there any further comment? Well, these people didn't anything you've heard of. Okay. Would this be a proper time for me to rebut? Uh, Matt? <laughs> 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 we knew you were going to. Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> okay, I'm going to read this whole thing in its entirety. Yeah. You're going to read the entire page? I'm going to read I'm going to read that whole paragraph okay. where you tried to take me out of context here. Can I, can I say, can I start off with that? I didn't try to take you out of context, but clearly I did, and I apologize for that, so go ahead. <laughs> so you're admitting you put me out of context. Uh, there's more context there than I, I was okay. trying to be brief. I'll, I'll let everybody else decide. I'm not going to read the entire. I'm going to let everybody else decide on this paragraph before we take this vote because I don't want people getting up and leaving and not giving me time to rebut it. Go for it, Mike. Okay. We don't want to take back. What here, we're here we go. <laughs> yeah. it's it's take back. It's true. We can't end okay. Here we go. Can everybody hear me through my mask? Yeah. Okay. My test, how many people are actually interested in reopening this? Brian said he has heard from two people since the town vote, but a couple of informational meetings we had, people saying that they were going to vote against the language on the ballot, but wanted to talk about ATVs. Mike said they are 538 people who don't want to talk about it. Who want to leave things the way they are? 62% said no. That's not even close. He doesn't even think we should be talking about it. He thinks the voters told us what they wanted to do. So Nat asked if Mike is saying he wouldn't support any changes to the ATV ordinance at all. Mike said if ATV use in the village gets an okay from the state, the board agreed to that last year. So this is kind of choppy as, as we see here. But anyway, hopefully everybody's gonna get the drift of this. Nat said the board agreed to a one year trial. Mike said that would mean amending the ordinance. Eric said, if we're going to make the access permanent, we need to amend the ordinance. Mike said, we are talking about a trial and it hasn't even started yet. It hasn't been approved by the state. Matt says he anticipates that the ATV club is going to come back and ask for permanent access. He thinks we should get ahead of that instead of reacting. Evan said when he and Beth were running for the select board, they were asked if they would respect the wishes of the voters regarding ATVs. The voters wish was to leave the ATV ordinance alone. He wants to do that. Beth said she agrees. She respects the vote, which was not to repeal the ordinance. But if this is about one season trial and the season has not yet occurred, how do we know if the trial is successful or not? We don't know the impact since we haven't even had the trial. She doesn't think we should put the cart before the horse. Eric said he is sensing there is not much interest in starting the process yet. If we decide we want to change the ordinance to permanently allow access to Main Street, then we have to start looking at our ordinance in the fall. If we adopt a change to the ordinance, there probably will be a petition raised, which will require a town-wide vote. 
Beth said she thinks there are a lot of things to consider. She thinks there's some validity in trying to resurrect some of the information for the ATV committee that existed in the past and we want to change the ordinance eventually. So basically what I was saying, that we haven't even had the trial yet, so why would we even want to talk about it? So that is the gist of it. You added some other well, the, can I, can I respond? So, uh, first I was, uh, Mike, I apologize for taking you out of context. It wasn't my intention. I was trying to be, um, to make a point quickly and I, in my expense. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll okay. Okay. All right. So thank you. And, and understand that this that this isn't the full uh, uh, minutes of the thing either. But the point that I'm trying to make is that we're talking about making a lot of different changes to the ordinance from Google Hill, which wasn't part of the trial, it has been part of a waiver for years, and other areas of the town talking about making other changes to the ordinance um, that in order to really do this properly, it takes time to do. And that I was an advocate of doing that back in May and I was urging the board to do that back in May. And now I'm being pushed to make a decision quickly, which I find ironic because I wanted to start the process early. So again, I clearly, uh, didn't mean to malign you, um, and thank you for for uh, your record. Carla, thank you for reading that too, because that is just a reminder that the vote that everyone took last year was a vote not to change the ordinance. Right now, the ordinance says <laughs> class three highway, unpaved class three highways, and class four highways. So I just want to make that point also, please. So the other the other thing from that that I got was that the expectation was put in here. I think it might have been by Eric that a petition would be raised later later in the year if we were going to make a change. So that's I, that's fully for what I was expecting to happen. No, my intent or what I uh, my thoughts were is I know this is a very divisive issue. So no matter what decision is made, if we change anything, one side or the other can raise the number of signatures, it would require a townwide special meeting to uh, vote on any change at least. After we make it. After we make okay. it. Okay. Not that they would raise the petition before we make it, but after we make a change. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. I want to but they can make motion. petitions before we do anything also. They can, the reality it, is it's non-binding. Non because I understand it's non-binding, but that helps inform what the voters want to see. And from what I've heard all along, there is a very clear polar mm -hmm. opinion happening here. And either side, like both sides are not settling for what's here, even though that's what the vote was about in the existing ordinance is what I mean by here. So, I mean, the process to change the ordinance in a way that speaks to the, to the select board beyond a vote we already took is to petition for a change to the ordinance that exists today, because we have one today. There is something to petition today. So why is this like- They, they can only petition was it 24 days or something like that? Days. After we adopt an ordinance, they can raise a petition uh, 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 after 44 be, days. Okay. And, and then it'll be binding. It would be a binding one then. They can, the voters can overrule the select board. I got you. Okay. So, uh, Diane? The other point to make, if I recall correctly, to address a question is that the, the the people who voted to repeal it or the, the people who wanted it repealed was as an alternative to doing this kind of modifying or wavering of the ordinances and so i mean and, and that addressed that too and the research you did about how do you actually 
adopt an ordinance? How do you modify it? How do you, how do you keep the record of that? And, and so there was a whole segment of people in this town who wanted the ordinance repel, repealed, not because they wanted to encourage more ATV use, but because that was the way to, to craft a different ordinance with even greater restrictions. And we're leaving those people out of the conversation here tonight altogether, is the people who wanted to repeal the ordinance to adopt a different one yeah. that was more legally appropriate than all these waivers and modifications and trials and all that. And we gotta keep those people in, the, in mind. I just like to say I'm about legally appropriate because the, the vote in the petition that was sent out for an advisory vote was nowhere near the wording of the petition. You guys crafted it. So just make that clear too that it was not even close to what the petition that was signed or the signatures were waived because of COVID. And it was nowhere near it was that long. You guys brought it down to three or four lines. So let's be clear about it that the board created that. Yeah, we know all that. I'd also like to state that when I come, I believe it was town meeting 2020 here. Yeah. I approached you and approached Brian about how we could possibly get a trial period. And you told me that it was the ordinance was created on the floor of town meeting. Mm -hmm. And that's why. I need to, to go to town meeting to discuss it. No, I don't. I don't think I exactly said that because the select board had had approved the. Correct. The ordinance was approved at town meeting, and you then you guys wrote it. No, when we originally did it, the select board adopted the ordinance, and then there was a petition raised, and there was a special town meeting, and the voters uh, honored the the. Yeah. The ordinance. Well, that's what I did. What, I, what you did, and I, if I recall the conversation, uh, is I told you because the warning had already gone out, is and you hadn't had to raise a petition. The only way that you could raise it would be under other business. You did that, and there, it's non-binding, but you did raise it, and there was a vote of the voters, and it was. Overwhelming to support ATVs into the bill. And then that was two years ago. And then I come back to the board and ask yep. the trial trip. And we gave you the illegal waiver, I guess. <laughs> yep. Well, let's go back two years before that when I came to the board to ask you to get to down call Clay Hill, Will Hill. Yep. Which you allowed. Yep. And I. And I also have to get down to Bull Hill down to Subway, which we will allow into the bill. And that, um, refresh my memory, how did you vote on all that? I'm sure I voted for it. That's right. The entire board did. So, I mean, you know, we're kicking the can down the road over and over and over. Why well, last this board if I should get a petition? And I was told it does no good. It'd be non binding. We've, we've done a trial period. We missed 30 days out of 90. And everybody's saying that there wasn't an adequate trial period. But I'll remember it was during COVID when most every person in this room was sitting home and not working. That's why there's a sudden, oh, there's a lot of ATVs. Well, if you're gone working, the people riding the ATVs were gone working, there wouldn't have been that many ATVs. So, so if we're going to say that this ordinance, by allowing the, us to do that, was not legal, so that means you're going to pull back and stop the ATV club, the snowmobile club from crossing Bull Hill, which you gave permission to last year. There's no snow. There is no ordinance for snowmobiles. We authorize it on a year annual basis. So again, we're letting a non-highway vehicle on the road. So I just want to make it clear that, you know what I mean, it's, the club has done exactly everything, yeah. everything this town's asked us to do. Um, I guess you know. let, let, let me just tell you, where your vote really counts is if we change this ordinance tonight or sometime in the future, you'll have 44 days to raise a petition 
it's not very hard, 5% of the voters, and we will be required to have a special town meeting and the voters will decide whether this future uh, ordinance is adopted or not. Okay, so that, that's when you would have a say. And there would be value in raising a petition. But to raise a petition now, if we had made any changes, it wouldn't affect, it we're not bound to anything. Okay, so uh, we'll go on something else. Um, we got a road permit. Flag road and the top section of Cotton Hall. Mm -hmm. um, town foreman signed that paper. Mm -hmm. If I can't get to them sections of the road, you might want to redo that paper. You'll have to repay back all the money you put in that trip. You, as of right now, you've got access. No, I'm just saying, you know what I mean? So there's a lot to it. You know what I mean? The mm -hmm. last year for $36,000 in the whole I road and Cotton Hall back. You know, so it's a lot of stuff saying that we don't do nothing for them. We bring money into town because we fix up the roads, which in turn solves a lot of issues from the complaints of the last well. Um, again, if you don't allow it, you know, you're saying that. So if you live on the south side of the Moyle River, you're a Johnson resident, you get to drive in a two and a half mile circle. But anybody on the north side of that river, is going to be on the roads that you have opened already, which is way more. So how would that be fair to half the residents? Because that side of the river is the big bolt that denied the last one. Okay, I'm just going to allow one more comment, Jackie. Yeah, I just have a question. Um, I'm hearing you know Johnson residents, but correct me if I'm wrong. This is a private club that's made this uh, request. Is that right? And does this private club? encompass all the towns of Memorial County and beyond, or? It's a state. Memorial County is pretty much part of the Green Mountain ATV. I came here as a resident and yeah. asked for it to open up because I stated that the residents on the other side of it, that was why I originally started that, if you read back in the minute, but, but, I stated that. But Vassa is a statewide, Vassa is similar statewide. to Vass for some yeah, of us. We're a non-profit. Okay, so it, it, it is a statewide. And then one more thing I just like to throw out here. All the bike paths, uh, the hiking paths, all them like to get RTP grant money. Remember, that was started by off road highway vehicles. All that money you guys spend to fix up the rail trail, the hiking paths, the other stuff that you're getting the RTP grant for, that's paid for by off road vehicles. Nobody else. Not your, when you fill up the tank at the gas station, it's paid for by off road vehicles. So put that out there. Okay. Um, we, we do, I think we've gone well over the 30 minutes. Uh, we do have a motion and a second on the floor. Read that motion, Mr. Chairman. Uh, <laughs> Donna, you have... All right, let's see, I got to scroll way up here. I think there's been a lot of conversations since then. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, okay, let's see. Let's see. Motion four. Okay, yeah, yeah he, he moved to amend. Section 4C of the ordinance to include paved class three and paved and unpaved class two roads. Okay. I'm going to be sticking them out again. Okay. Evan said when he and Beth were running for the select board, they were asked that they would respect the wishes of the voters regarding ATVs. The voters wish to leave the ATV ordinance alone. He wants to do that. So Evan stated he wanted to leave it alone, and he's made a motion now to amend the ordinance. Okay. The, the voters overwhelmingly rejected the idea of repealing the ordinance. Every time anything has come up, come up on ATVs, the voters have supported it. Uh, if you. I can withdraw my motion if that would be the more appropriate thing to do because of how it reads in the minutes, but the minutes are not the context of the meeting. Well, unfortunately, I mean, we have only we only have the minutes to go by. Understood. And that's what everybody believes. So we do still have a motion on the floor. 
I would draw my second. Has the second been withdrawn? Is there another second? Lacking a second, motion will die. Motion has died. Okay, I open it up. Is there any other motions, discussion? I couldn't go out after six years ago, it was my word either. So, the rules for the, the just so everyone is clear, because I think all errors that have been made by this select board have just been in terms of not being clear on what the process is. The ordinance, the ATV ordinance, is online, signed in 2006. That's existing now. Any ordinance changes that we need to make will have to go through this process for changing an ordinance. Uh, Vermont League in Cities and Towns has info sheets on uh, ordinance no uh, notice and posting requirements, municipal assistance center for ordinance adoption amendment or repeal. These are online and they're very clear. Um, so this is the process and there should be no other sort of, it'll, it'll be sausage making in the meantime, it'll be kind of nitty gritty when we get into what the ordinance should be, but this is the process. This is one part of the process. Yeah. Like okay. this printout that we have is one part of the process. I think there's more to it that we need to follow. Because this is about ordinance notice and posting requirements, which is not the full extent of ordinance process. That's, that's one of the worksheets on the website. Yeah. But yeah. There's, there's a lot more there. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty significant one, but yeah. Um, so, um, I guess I'm looking for a little guidance from the board on do we want to proceed in any fashion on the whole ATV issue, or are we uh, going to put it to the new board? I think at this point the new board needs to weigh in personally. Okay. Do we I want, agree because there's nothing really. Do we want Ryan to start looking at any language changes? Can I bring you an up to date proposal that we can? It won't be us. Well, well that some of us. <laughs> can I bring the new board. Can I get consent from this board to present the new board? With the proposal, looking at the language and, and making sure it complies with state statutes and yada yeah. yada. What else do you have going on? <laughs> <laughs> I I do have a, a decent amount of work to do, but you say there is a boilerplate. Yeah, there, there is a, a an up to date model ordinance. I don't remember the year it was drafted, but it's much more recent within the last year or two. I'd look at that, compare it to our existing one, and have maybe not a complete ordinance ready for us for our next meeting, but I could have something that would help move the conversation forward. Honestly, Brian, I feel like the new board should instruct you to do that. And if there's already a template out there, maybe just giving the new board the template with our existing policy would make the most sense up front, and then getting that directed from the new board to actually do the work using the template. Okay. Is that consensus? Okay. Fine with me. Okay. So we'll just provide that. Okay. Yeah. Real, real quick. Real quick. Can I ask that you approve the trial period? Well, the consensus was last week. I think the problem, some of the things that Matt identified makes it a problem for us. Again, right. well, um, I also asked Brian if I could get you guys to sign and do it land and property slip again. But if you're going to pull everything and charge full hill and clay hill, it's no sense in the As of right now, things will be status quo. So if, if that, he, he had requested that to you? Yes. Okay. Basically, states that we can use the same trail and do it land as we did last time. It's basically, a landowner permission. Yep. 
Okay, I can leave that with you and have yep. somebody sign it and witness it. If you could yep. copy it and send it back to me in the email. Basically, it's for access and travel through the Do It property that the town open owns. And that is not a town village property. Um, no, but it's got that Yeah, I've right, but to get to the to get to that, you've got to go over a paved class three or two road. It said it was going to be that call it what it was. Well, that's what he said, but that's not what the yeah. ordinance says. It, we, do, we will have to address that. Well, I mean, but we need to be clear. Yeah. We had the changes for the last time. No. Yeah. We had approved them, and I, you know, I do, I, I recognize it's not entirely fair to the club to, at this point, say, well, yeah, we've. It's, you've had that all along, and you've got, to, you've got to take it away. But legally, I don't think we can do that. Can you, can you bring this back to the next board? And uh, I, I suggest you uh, cross out the village references. Yeah, I'll bring it. But it doesn't matter. Bring it back to the next board, and that point is still going to be valid, I think. Yeah, but we'll let the next board. <laughs> they're, they're going to have to change the ordinance if they want to authorize this. The issue is that you're already out of compliance with your own ordinance. Yeah. Yeah, before you. For a short section of road, yes, yeah, to get access here. Yeah. All right. Moving on. <laughs> All right. Next up. Uh, there's really an action to take with this. Uh, the Ronald Electric Co-op Public Private Stormwater Partnership. Uh, we participated in a program that helped create a design for uh, BEC for uh, their increased stormwater mitigation requirements under the three acre layout. Greater than three acres of impermeable surfaces, they had to make some improvements to the stormwater system. Uh, by participating in a public private partnership, they are have designed for excess capacity, which we might be able to use uh, as part of our stormwater mitigation plan for the light industrial park across the across Route 15 from the Vermont Electric Co. Uh, so that's kind of what we're getting out of this partnership. It has progressed to the next stage uh, with all of the additional infrastructure funding that's going on. Uh, and has, has been granted approval for funding. There is no match for, there's no cash match for the town. Uh, I will be continuing to attend a few engineering meetings about the topic, uh, but that's the town's only outlay for No action tonight. I don't think there's any action related. It's just, it's progressed on to the next stage where okay. they're getting money, uh, but we're, we're just a party to that for that. Anybody got any questions? No. Good. Let's move on to Jenna's Promise Partnership. All right. Our partnership with Jenna's Promise, uh, the CDBG that we have applied for with Jenna's Promise for the uh, coffee shop is ready to progress. Uh, and pay out. In order for that to happen, we have to adopt the SM1 form, uh, or excuse me, PM1 form, which is the grant agreement resolution, which says that we will follow uh, the grant agreement document. The grant agreement document has all the state standard language about uh, you know, using our procurement policy, following uh, following all, all the state's oversight requirements, and we've got a fair number of pages here, but how we use the funds, what's eligible, uh, that we are the administrator, we are the subgrantee. Let's see. They provide the documentation to certify that they are they are also in good standing. Uh, we're receiving assistance from LCTC for all of this, uh, but 
the essential part is that because we are the actual grantee. Um, you have a copy of that policy we have to sign? I do. Sign? It's a, printed a little funny, so it's a little small. But okay. if you can, if we adopt it, you can write your name and sign it. What's the board's pleasure? Is it all board signatures? Yes. Okay. What's the board's uh, so the match and prime that's on the agreement is paid by Dennis Promise. We're just a go to motion for the board to approve and sign the resolution block grant. We have news as it goes. We have a motion on the floor for the resolution and we have a second. Are we exposing the town to any problems or somehow that somebody says that we didn't cross it? Here, dot an I or something. I mean, we've done hundreds of these, and I've never had a heard of a problem or an issue. I mean, we're agreeing to uh, to be a part of this if they were, you know, in gross violation of the law, something that the state believes we should have had a oversight and should have been aware of. I suppose there, there would be some liability there. Uh, but we're working with Dennis Promise on this, and so is LCPC, who's also working on our behalf. Uh, this, this, I feel that there's quite a bit of oversight there. I, I would be, uh, I don't think there's any problem with. Do we have a motion to adopt the policy? Do we have a second? Uh, resolution. Uh, resolution. Uh, we have a second. I have a second. Um, motion second. I just want to just echo what Mike is saying though, because um, I don't mean this in any offensive way, Brian, but yeah. you're um, a bit biased in yeah. oversight. Um, so, um, what protections do we have for the town? Our liability insurance is really very hard. And would our liability insurance cover amounts this high or limits on it? There are, I'd have to pull the coverage documents to find out what the limits are. Um, but I, I, I have to take a quote what the amounts are, but I don't expect them to. It isn't chicken feed this grant, you know. No. But most projects that towns are involved in, our liability running into half a million dollars is not an unusual exposure for a town. So I would expect our liability insurance to cover that amount, even though I don't know what our coverage comes out of it off the top of my head. In my too. Using this to rehabilitate a really important building in our downtown and, and uh, provide a coffee shop and bring a need of recovery services to the locals. They're not doubting the importance of it. I understand. Yep. No, I, I mean, we not. probably had a much more complicated and certainly more exposure with the market, with the sterling market. And that was. Six hundred thousand, well over half a million dollars. I just don't like the wording when it says we are here to yeah. stop and all of that. It just it's problematic for me. We've done similar with the railway school. Yeah, the railway. I'm sure it's in every one of them. But. So we have motion to second on the floor. Any more discussion? See none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The eyes have it. Uh, unless there's any further business, I would entertain a motion to enter into executive session. So moved. Well, this is one of the two parties. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's the right word, is it? It is. It is suggested uh, that premature. 
moved that premature. It is moved that premature public knowledge about the negotiation for purchase and sale of a greater enterprise was found to suffer substantial disadvantage because confidential discussion of the town's position will be revealed. Uh, executive session would be allowed by one VSA 313A1. Motion, we have a second. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? None. All those in favor, seems like saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. And this is where we need the second motion, right? Will we have a second motion for it? No, she kind of wants to talk about it to one. But I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay. Well, show us in executive session. That's, uh, 856. Thank you all for coming tonight. Bye, everybody.